Hey yo, what's good reader fam? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm not going to be talking about books, so please don't unsubscribe. Today I'm actually going to be talking about K-pop. I'm a K-pop lover and if you're not about that, I get it. I once was in your shoes, but then I tripped and fell out of your shoes and stepped into K-pop shoes. And now I'm pretty much obsessed, which is kind of how it happens. It's an endless spiral and you just keep falling. So if you're not into K-pop and you don't care about this kind of video, I totally get it. Just skip this video. I promise that I've got a bookish video coming sooner rather than later. So keep your eyeballs peeled for that. I don't have many people in my life to talk about K-pop with, and I'm pretty sure that YouTube is a good outlet to do that. So that's what I'm gonna do today. We're gonna talk about K-pop. I have done a video where I paired K-pop with books, but I've never done a sit-down video like this where I just flat out talk about K-pop. So that's what's gonna be happening today. I'm gonna be talking about some recent comebacks and my thoughts on them, so let's not waste any time. Let's dive on in. The first comeback that I wanna talk about is Monster X featuring French Montana, and that is Who Do You Love? Listen, I'm not gonna lie. I can't stand French Montana. Montana. For some reason, he bothers me so much. I would not have missed him had they released this song without him. In fact, I'd be okay if they gave us a version of this song without him on the track. I know that collaborations in K-pop are super big right now, but Monsta X can hold their own. Plus, I don't know if any of you guys saw the collaborative stage that Monsta X and French Montana did for a late show, but he really showed up and mumbled the lyrics on stage because he clearly didn't even feel the need to learn the lyrics before showing up. The lack of disrespect is unreal. Anyway, the Monsta X part is great. We stand. This song honestly reminds me of some kind of old school boy group song. It almost feels like a throwback to Backstreet Boys or NSYNC, and that is not meant as an insult at all. Backstreet Boys and NSYNC had some bops. It also kind of has a Charlie Puth vibe to it now that I'm thinking about it. I'm not huge on Charlie's music, but boys got some catchy songs, and that's a fact. I will say that the music video for this song didn't impress me much, but Monsta X already have some top-notch music videos under their belt, so it's kind of hard comparing this music video to their other music videos. Next up, we've got Idol or G Idol, whichever you want to call it. I call them Idol, and they came back with a O. Honestly, I have yet to be let down by an Idol comeback. They are it. Their songs just deliver greatness, and even their B sides are great. And I think it's so dope that their leader has a hand in terms of producing and writing of their music. Like, talk about talent really jumping out. This song has a very retro RB vibe to it, which I'm all about. As for the music video, I wasn't overly impressed with it. It was still a good video, like visuals on point, but this video just kind of felt like Cube wasn't really willing to shovel over some money to put behind this music video, which is pretty lame. I mean, it was still a good video, but again, comparing it to their other videos, this doesn't even come close to touching those. Next up, we've got to talk about some EXO solo debut, along with another subunit debut. Bakhyun dropped his solo album, and I've been really digging it, which is something that I'm actually really surprised by, because it's not necessarily the style of K-pop music that I gravitate towards. Like, I I really enjoy that upbeat, high energy pump in beats when it comes to K-pop music. And I feel like his whole album is just like the epitome of chill. It makes me want to go to a cafe with dim lighting at midnight when it's raining outside. I want to drink some coffee and just listen to this album. Is that weird? Does anybody else feel that way? I think my favorite song on the album is Psycho, though You In Village is right under it. As for the video for You In Village, I feel like they did a really good job of kind of encompassing the tone of that song in the video. It's got a very dark aesthetic that I feel like suits it very well, but I have to admit this isn't my favorite style of video. It's just kind of different shots of him in different settings, which I'm sure for people who really like his visuals, they're all about it, but I don't swing that way, so it didn't really interest me that much. If you really want to pull me in with a music video, you've got to give me choreo, some dope threads, maybe a storyline, and lots of interesting visual sets. But again, I do think that this video did work for the song. It just didn't really impact me, and I don't ever really see myself coming back to that video. Then we got the XOSC subunit debut with their title track What A Life, which it just kind of dawned on me that I haven't listened to the full mini album yet. I've only listened to What A Life. Clearly something's wrong with me. I need to get on that stat. But I've listened to the title track quite a bit because I really enjoy it. The lyrics are really fun. It does kind of have that cliche, young, wild, and free message about it. But that message will always be relevant, I feel like. And I think that I personally will always enjoy songs that have that message in them. Chan Yul is actually one of my favorite rappers in K-pop. He's rapping voice is just super distinct, and he's just got a really nice flow. As for the video, let's be real here, it just made me feel poor. They're frolicking around living this large life, meanwhile I'm over here on my computer eating Cheetos and getting Cheeto dust all over me. Something that I did really enjoy in the video was the colors, from the clothes to the sets. On point! While there wasn't much dancing, there was enough to kind of satisfy my needs. Like this dance move. That's the dance move, right? I can't dance for the life of me. Don't judge me. What a life, what a life, what a life. Next up we've got Stray Kids. They 
came back with the title track, Side Effects. I loved this song with the first listen, so I excitedly ran to Twitter and like looked for other people's thoughts on it. And it was so interesting to me that this song was such a miss for so many people, because in my ears, it's such a freaking bop. In a lot of ways, Stray Kids kind of reminds me of Red Velvet, which hear me out on this for a second. I'm not talking about in terms of music style, but more so in the fact that each comeback has been wildly different. Both groups are not afraid to put out music that's kind of more unconventional, more experimental, and know that I'm complimenting both Stray Kids and Red Velvet when I say that. Anyway, Side Effects kind of gives me a Billie Eilish meets 21 Pilots with a bit of Stray Kids edge. Does anyone else feel that way? I also really liked the message of this song, at least what I got out of it. And the message that I got is this idea of taking a step back in your life and like questioning yourself and seeing how these different changes in your life you're going through are affecting you. Trying to understand how situations and people have really influenced and affected you. I also love the fact that some of the members are involved in the creation process of the music. It makes it a little bit more personal, but I will say I am not of the belief that K-pop artists who write their own music are better than other K-pop artists who don't write their music. Like, that ain't it, Chief. But I do think it's really cool when K-pop artists get to be involved in the creation process because of the fact that it is so rare within K-pop. Now, for the music video, it was a serve, as I knew it would be. I've yet to watch a Stray Kids music video that I didn't love. They are that group. They're definitely telling some kind of story with this series, so I'm super eager to get the next music video to kind of tie things together because I'm honestly kind of confused as to what the heck is going on with that storyline. But if you guys have any theories, let me know what those theories are down below in the comments. Also, the freaking choreography for this comeback was next level. I highly recommend watching some of their stages or even their dance practice for side effects because Ah, I was so impressed. They go so hard and it just gave me so much energy. My favorite B-side from this album is mixtape number three. Catch me getting emotional to the song every time I listen to it. Speaking of Red Velvet, at the beginning of summer, they came back with Zimza La Bit. Red Velvet is my alt group. They are my ride or die. With that being said, I know that Red Velvet are all about being unconventional. They're not always going to release music that the public likes. And the second I heard this song, I was like, yeah, a lot of people are gonna have some opinions about this song and they're not gonna be that that positive. I feel like you have to have an understanding for Red Velvet's music and their style to get some instant enjoyment from Zimza La Bim. Like, had I not known Red Velvet's musical history before listening to this song, I would have been like, okay, is this a witch's chant? Because that's what it sounds like. Even though this song grew on me and I loved it, when I first heard it, it was really jarring. I was like, what is happening with this song? But now I love it and it makes me respect them so much more because of the fact that they're willing to put out music that isn't necessarily going to pop off in the public ears. I love that they're willing to take risks and that they don't deliver the same thing with each comeback. That's what makes it so exciting being a fan of theirs because you never know what you're gonna get with each title track and you're never gonna get a Red Velvet song that sounds like another Red Velvet song. It still drives me crazy to this day when people say that Really Bad Boy is a copy of Bad Boy. Like did you even listen to the songs? The only thing they have in common is a Bad Boy. One is really bad and one is just bad. Anyway, Sims Alabim, the lyrics are kind of about changing your dreams. It's about self-reflection and seeing if you're really going after what your heart wants. Always a solid message. The video was top-notch. I loved the theme park feel to it and how trippy it was. People were hating on the styling for this comeback, which I kind of understand because it was a little bit weird, but realistically it did kind of fit the concept. I will say though that I felt bad for Joy's hair. What the heck did they do to her? I also really enjoyed the choreo, but I knew that I would because I always love Red Velvet's choreography. My favorite B-side track I think would have to be LP. It's just such a chill bop. Next up, NCT Dream came back with Boom. Dear SM, please make NCT Dream a fixed unit. Stop making them graduate and keep them as a team, I beg of you. Boom is such a good song. It's super catchy. It's a freaking bop. Some of the English translation for the lyrics are a little questionable. For example, to you, my sweat is heavy rain. Um, Ooh? At least that's what Genius has as one of the lyric translations. I'm not entirely sure what the message of the song is. Like, I feel like it's kind of about owning your confidence, but I had kind of a hard time deciphering the English translation. Let me know what you got out of it down below in the comments. Regardless, it's a fun song, and that note that Runjin hits at 2.37 around that mark, holy crap, boys got some pipes. And the music video was great, despite the fact that Heichan was super busy during the time of the shooting for the music video and didn't get to be in all the shots. I'm not salty at 
at all. I think my favorite B-side from this mini album is Stronger. Next up, we've got Pentagon and they came back with Humph. I freaking love this song and everyone is sleeping on it. Like, where are all you Shine fans? This song has such a similar feel to Shine. Wake up and stream the song, you lazies. No, but really, this song is super fun and happy and I love it. Even with all the drama that this group has gone through, they're still holding up well and delivering some bops. I wish that Cube promoted them better, but what can you do? Stream. That's what you can do. Stream. This song is essentially about friends fighting and them trying to work it out, but mostly the friends just kind of blaming the other person. The video is super bright, and as always, the choreography is super fun and fit the song super well. My favorite B-side is round two because of its chaotic energy. I live for it. Next up, we've got Itzy with their first comeback, Icy. I had the same experience with Icy that I had with Dala Dala. When I first heard Dala Dala, I was not about it. Then somehow, some way, I became trash for it and listened to it on repeat. The same thing happened with Icy. At first, I didn't love it, but then it quickly grew on me, and now I can't stop listening to it. Somebody help me. Somebody save me. Again, I'm going to compare this group to other groups, but I mean it as a compliment, I promise. But I feel like with Itzy, JYP is trying to make a group that kind of combines Red Velvet's uniqueness with Blackpink's edge. Because both Itzy's title track, both Dala Dala and Icy, have kind of had that unconventional vibe to it, and that really reminds me of Red Velvet. And then when it comes to the image of Itzy, they kind of have that girl crush vibe going for them, which is what reminds me of Blackpink. Does anyone else feel that way? Again, I mean it as a compliment. I feel like the lyrics for this song are really about owning who you are and not caring about what anybody else thinks about you and just march into the beat of your own drum because you can't please everybody, which is a great message to live by. The music video was solid. The choreography was intense. It made me tired watching it. I can't imagine having to perform that choreography all the time. I love that move where it looks like they break their necks. I think my favorite B-side from this album would have to be It's Summer. Next up, Red Velvet just recently had a comeback for Oompa Oompa. The Queens of Summer returned. I honestly kind of gave a big sigh of relief when I first heard Oompa Oompa because I kind of felt like Red Velvet needed a public friendly song after Zim's All A Bit. They had two back-to-back -back tracks that were really unique and different and experimental. They had RBB and then they had Zim's All A Bit, which are great songs, but they're not public friendly songs. Anyway, Oompa Oompa is super fresh and fun. I took the lyrics to be about two people who are falling deeply in love with each other. And let me just tell you, I almost had a stroke when I realized that they were referencing some of their older title tracks. Stroke might be a bit of an exaggeration, but I was shook. We got that red flavor shout out, Dum Dum, Happiness, Ice Cream Cake. They did what? That. The music video was super vibrant and fun and was serving all sorts of summer vibes. Solgi on the roof trying to fix the antenna was definitely my favorite part. I'd have to say that Carpool is probably my favorite B-side. Okay, we've reached the final comeback that I'm gonna be talking about today and that is Everglow with Adios. This is a rookie group that debuted this year and they had a fantastic debut, but they had an even better comeback. This is the style of music that has me flailing all over the place. It's got that strong beat and it's just got that overall strong tone to it. Like you listen to it and you just feel empowered. It's definitely been added to my running playlist. The lyrics to me are about kind of cutting out somebody who has been toxic in your life and just saying bye bye. And the music video is so good. That choreo though. That's my way of saying I love the choreo. 10 out of 10. They're definitely one of the best rookie groups on the scene right now and I can't wait to see what they do next. I'd have to say that Hush is my favorite B-side off this album even though it's got such a different tone than audio. So that was such a long video. If you made it all the way to the end. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Be sure to let me know down below in the comments your favorite summer K-pop comeback. Also, let me know down below in the comments if you think that I should do this again in the future. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more videos from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe, even though I mostly talk about books and not K-pop. Or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, and that tomorrow is brighter, and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye. Oh.